Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and Avengers Endgame's marketing strategy seems to be to reveal as little as possible. And I get it. You got psychos like me on YouTube analyzing Mark Ruffalo's pupil dilation. That's his secret. He's always blabbing. The main thing missing from the limited footage that we've seen is the subject that's really been the focus of our endgame speculation. What the endgame itself will be. The epic comeback strategy for the Avengers. But I think that focus on the victory drive has caused us to overlook the very real possibility that as bad as things are currently for the Avengers, they could still get way worse. And if you pay close attention to these trailers and clues from the filmmakers, it's actually starting to look likely that the Avengers will fail again. Spoiler warning in case this theory or anything else I say ends up being right and ruins your life. Okay, this question first entered my mind when we began noticing some inconsistencies in the in-game footage. The recent trailer, the post credit scene after Captain Marvel, specifically characters like Cap and Natasha. Cap appears in both clean-shaven and bearded varieties, and Nat's hair appears in the short blonde cut that she had in Infinity War, a longer blonde braid, undone with her natural red flushing out the blonde, and that longer red tied in a new braid. Of course, there's always a possibility of time travel or multiverse hopping around. But the simplest explanation to me is that these events of Endgame will take place over a long period of time. Like, not simply opening title card six months later, but some events taking place shortly after Thanos' snap and other story events that take place much later. Avengers Endgame is rumored to be three hours long. That's a lot of story. So I think we can expect that this plot will have to be structured in phases. Much like it was in past Russo Brothers Marcus McFeely movies. Winter Soldier, Civil War, Infinity war with opening setbacks, shifting tactics, and twists. And when it comes to the opening act of Endgame, the screenwriter hinted that the first act would, quote, come from a darker place. And Marvel head Kevin Feige has suggested that the marketing for the film would only show the first 15 minutes of the movie, roughly. Combine those clues with the fact that the Endgame trailers do reveal some shots of characters in some kind of battle. Cap tightening its shield and gritting his teeth. Nebula, Rock, and War Machine appear to be in a similar setting. If we take Kevin Feige at his word, and if this isn't the major late in the movie climax of Endgame, then this could be early in the film. And it'd be kind of surprising to see something this dramatic that early in the film, wouldn't it? Feige also revealed recently that the original idea was to feature the snap not at the end of Infinity War, but in the first act of Endgame. Of course, they ended up making a snap a cliffhanger between movies, but I still think they intend on Endgame opening with some major defeat, some darker place that the Avengers still don't emerge victorious from. From, leaving them in a state of depression for months and months long enough for Black Widow's hair dye to wash out. So what could Endgame's opening defeat look like? Well, the cast and filmmakers have implied that some characters will feel more restless than others. Scarlett Johansson has said Nat is looking for answers, itching to finish a job. And same thing with Cap, whom we've seen in Endgame trailers refusing to move on. And filmmakers have acknowledged he played a relatively lesser role in Infinity War to set up a more active charge in Endgame. And the first trailer had that particularly desperate line from Cap. This is gonna work, Steve. I know it is because I don't know what I'm gonna do if it doesn't. And then there's Thor, whom the screenwriters have said is feeling a lot of remorse for not going for the head. Thor was particularly excited to meet Captain Marvel in the recent trailer. I like this one. And maybe that's because he sees her as a quick fix, a badass warrior who could potentially break Infinity Stones. So let's go right now. These characters might be more eager than the others to chase down Thanos and give him a thump in, even if it wouldn't really work. I've speculated that these battle shots of Cap could be on Titan II, that new home planet that Thanos settled down in after Infinity War. These Avengers could be avenging by torching Thanos' farm. Oh, I just planted that sorghum. But this rushed vengeance attempt could lead to further humiliation. I'll explain what that could look like in just a second, but before I continue, thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. It's an amazing mobile game, probably the most immersive experience you'll find on a smartphone, or in this case, a tablet device. We really should be comparing it to the biggest PC in console titles, but this game is totally free. Raid has all the features that you would expect from a brand new RPG title. An amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, giant boss fights, PvP battles, and hundreds of champions to collect and customize. But I never expected to get this level of performance out of a mobile game. Honestly, look how crazy the level of detail is on these champions. Each of his beard pieces has a hair tie. Raid is getting big real fast, so jump on this and get a huge head start. There's also a special launch tournament coming up with crazy in-game prizes and real-life physical prize packs. So go down to the description 
subscription and download Raid only through my links to get 50,000 silver immediately and a free Epic Champion as part of the new player program, courtesy of the developer team. See you there. Okay, back to how a rushed payback attempt by the Avengers could backfire. It's possible that Thanos could simply snap again, dust away another half of the remaining universe, down to a quarter, to punish the Avengers for being sore losers. Kind of like a judge who throws more and more prison time at a defendant who tries to fight back. And I sentence you to 20 days for that. And, and if you say anything else, I'm gonna add 20 days for everything you say. F you. 40 days. F you again. 60. Go f yourself. A year. Your mama. 10 years. Uh, sorry, I know we stayed on that a bit long. I just love rewatching it. But imagine with Thanos. Now we're down to 25%. Oh, still fighting? 12.5%. Oh, still more? 6.25%. Like he could just keep snapping and snapping and snapping until all that's left is like half of Thor's new eyeball. One of the screenwriters was quoted recently saying Thanos is the one true master of the stones, that others don't understand their true power, how to use them, and that Thanos can reset as many times as it'll take, requiring the Avengers to try to keep away one stone at a time. This quote implies a recurring series of comeback attempts, each one reset by Thanos, perhaps using the same kind of time loop Dr. Strange used on Dormammu, except here it could be the Avengers failing over and over, perhaps leading to the death toll climbing higher and higher, losing even more heroes like Captain Marvel maybe, further wearing down the Avengers resolve until Thanos forces them to just move on. Because this three hour epic film can't just be like 10 minutes of the Avengers wallowing in post snap defeat until Scott Lang bursts in with a tiny building and a bunch of nonsense about quantum physics, half of which is probably getting wrong anyway, all to set up one long mission that'll take like two hours and 50 minutes to complete. No, there's probably gonna be debate over what the right tactic is. Messy attempts that fail or make things worse before they finally reach the correct course. Look, the Russos and the M's have proven to be really good about defying our expectations in the past, hiding darker twists that are impossible to predict from trailer footage alone. Like we all thought Winter Soldier would simply be about Cap realizing a super assassin was actually his old pal Bucky, but twist, it also revealed that Hydra was behind S.H.I.E.L.D. all this time. We thought Civil War would be a debate over superhero registration, but twist, it was actually a much more personal fight over Stark's parents. And we thought Infinity War would be a struggle to stop Thanos from gathering all the stones in which maybe one or two heroes would die, but twist. Twist, half of them did, which I guess is exactly what happened in the comics, but still felt like a twist. So I think we're in store for a similar dark twist in Endgame. Remember, in Tony Stark's nightmare in Age of Ultron, it wasn't the characters who dusted an Infinity War who were dead, it was the original six, any of whom could still eat it in Endgame. We may expect this movie to involve some complicated sci-fi strategy to undo the snap, but it could actually open with the most surprising twist of all, that the rock bottom that we thought we hit ain't even the rock bottom yet. So here's my question. Which major character do you think is the most likely to die in the first act of Endgame? Comment down below with your thoughts. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at EABoss and subscribe to New Rockstars for all of our Avengers theories that, statistically speaking, will probably be wrong. Bye.